हेलो एवरी वन सो वेलकम टू द डे फोर सेशन टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट लाइक वॉट इज द रोड मैप दैट यू नीड टू फॉलो टू बिकम अ डीप लर्निंग प्रैक्टिशनर और डीप लर्निंग इंजीनियर बिकॉज सो फार वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द न्यूरल नेटवर्क वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द यूज केस स्टडी बट एक्चुअली इफ यू वॉन्ट टू गेट अ जॉब एज अ डीप लर्निंग इंजीनियर वॉट आर द थिंग्स दैट यू शुड मास्टर ऑन और नॉट जस्ट थिंग्स इट्स ऑल अबाउट लाइक विच रोड मैप यू नीड टू फॉलो विच थिंग यू शुड लर्न फर्स्ट एंड हाउ यू हैव टू गो अड विद दैट सो इन दिस सेशन वी विल डिस्कस ऑल दोज डिटेल्स इन शॉर्ट ओके सो फर्स्ट यू हैव टू सी दैट यू शुड बी वेल वर्स विद द प्रोग्रामिंग Why programming? Because programming is the language where you can define your logic or you can tell your computer that okay, this is how you have to perform. So you have to be good in some programming language. Once you are good with the language, then you should learn mathematics. Mathematics is like I would say it's a heart of this deep learning. If you don't know mathematics, if you are not good at mathematics, then it will be a big problem. yes later on when you start coding the things might be mathematics you will not use directly but suppose if you are writing any algorithm even if you are using the library after that you have to tweak something or you want to change something then only mathematics is the way you can figure out like okay what things you have to be changed or if you are getting some output how it happened and what are the things that you should actually take care of apart from that like once you get master in the mathematics you know about the language after that you have to go ahead with the neural network so in the neural network case you have to learn basic neural network you have to learn the key terms that are related to it you have to first learn the feed forward network that okay this is the how a neural network architecture is designed if i am just going in one direction okay like in this direction and suppose if you have built a feed forward network then it's not like it's feed forward network we will discuss it in later but feed forward network is just like a path that uh, you are going in one direction or i would say suppose you are making a decision suppose your neural network has predicted something so even if it's predicted wrong that you are not correcting it okay but if you want to make more better decisions or you want to accurate decision then you have to apply some back propagation algorithm you have to go back and learn again whatever is not being learned properly for that you have to learn back propagation this is the basic neural network architecture that you have to learn once you are good with that then you have to be good about uh, different types of neural networks you have to be good about the transfer learning everything you are going to learn but this this will be the general flow uh, in which you are going to be a deep learning engineer now when i'm saying that you have to be good at language so you have to think that which kind of language you have to be good at it's r or python r or python is generally a debatable topic so when i'm saying that which language i have to choose it's r or python it's very confusing for many people who are just who have just started out the reason behind uh, uh, this confusion because both are used for the data analysis both we use for mathematical analysis matrix operation but we have to understand that only one language that we can use for uh, further utilization or i would say for deep learning architecture that is python okay and why python because python is a scalable language so uh, if you are going to deploy your model or if you are going to make application out of it it's very easy to make it with the help of python you can't exp- uh, ex- scale it you can't explore it more with the help of r r is more mathematical language so it's li- uh, that's the reason uh, we prefer python over or uh, r okay and one more reason uh, to prefer python is like there are lots of library support is there like you can see pytorch keras tensorflow pandas numpy there are so many libraries that are specifically built for deep learning architecture or for data science problems only so that advantage also you get when you are using python language for experimentation now question comes like why maths and how much how much maths okay 
this these two things definitely uh, will come in mind if you are starting the deep learning and uh, you will hear lots of word about it okay there are lots of things in the math some people think i'm not from a mathematical background then how should i go ahead with this first of all math you have to understand why do i actually need maths okay you can see you you understand the language okay and the way whatever is your native native language it's easy for you to understand anything in that language itself but suppose you are teaching uh, or you are trying to make a computer understand that understand only this binary language okay so basically it understands the numbers it does not understand anything apart from that so basically whatever logic you are making okay you have to derive it with the maths and you have to represent it in the python or any programming language this is how we make a software okay so basically maths is necessary because everything either it's in the form of text it's in the form of image everything has to be converted in numbers at that and if i am converting number everything into numbers then i'm going to make every decision mathematically it's like mathematical operations has to be applied okay now question comes how much maths i have to apply right so there are three major components if you are going to learn deep learning one is the linear algebra second is the calculus and third is the probability so there are the these three components that you have to learn anyhow one is the linear algebra why linear algebra is important because as i said in the deep learning we generally deal with either text data or image data most of the time and if you see that how a computer reads an image in the form of pixels what is pixels pixel is a matrix okay a which has numbers in it so basically for that you should be good with matrix operations if you are not aware of matrix operation definitely you can't actually build any neural network architecture you have to good with with matrix multiplication division not division sorry you have to be good with matrix multiplication you have to be good with addition subtraction all these things also now why calculus calculus is important to understand that which decision has to be made or whatever decision is going to be designed or going to be predicted uh, is it accurate or i would say how much accurate we can predict or basically in technical term if i talk about there is loss uh, Uh, we have to calculate loss we have to calculate accuracy all these things we have to minimize the function and for that calculus is needed you have to dif learn differentiation you have to learn integration these two three things are important apart from that probability probability is the base of all the data science and deep learning problems because anyway you are going to predict the probability of happening something either it's a classification or it's a prediction it's all about probability so these are the three key aspects in that that you have to learn if you are dealing with the images you have to be extremely good with this linear algebra and calculus is the heart of this all the algorithm related to the neural network or deep learning either you talk about the back back propagation you talk about the forward propagation everything each and every solution is derived with the calculus okay so you have to be good at these things now to what extent i would say that if you have studied well in your 11th and 12th standard or if you are from a mathematical background then it's more than enough so or if you have prepared for je exam or maybe any other competitive exams during your uh, 11th or 12th class then it is more than sufficient no mathematics will be needed apart from that if you know that much then it's completely fine you should be able to understand if i am taking a derivation how it has to be done what is partial derivatives or i would say how you are calculating minimum maximum these things are important if you know that much it's more than enough now when i come to the neural network what are the things that you have to learn in neural network so in the neural network first we learn the feed forward network then back propagation algorithm then different types of neural network architecture here i have mentioned three but there are lots of uh, neural network architectures are there so generally people first understand the neural network basic neural network architecture then we do understand the what is convolutional neural network architecture that is cnn and then we go with the recurrent neural network then we go with the auto encoders and once we are go good with all these architecture then we understand transfer learning because as i said lots of data is needed and if data is higher then definitely 
training will be very uh, long okay it will take huge time so that's why what we do we generally tra- keep uh, our model trained on one time and then we try to transfer that learning to somewhere else or to our new problem this is called transfer learning in layman terms so we will discuss this thing as well you just understand okay this these are the general flow that people follow while studying the neural network these two are interconnected and most important factors when you are studying neural network apart from that once you are good with all these three things then you have to get your hands dirty with pi pi torch and pi tensor flow because these two libraries are heavily used in the industry to implement any deep learning related problems so basically you have to be good with these two things or any one of these will also work most of the time i would say in industry this pi torch is used because it is more implementable or i would say deployable uh, tensor flow is used more for research purpose because it provides you the base that you can tweak the architecture in any possible way it helps in deployment pi torch helps in deployment tensor flow that's why it is used in the industry okay while tensor flow is used for the research purpose so it's completely your choice which uh, library you have used or you are learning but both the libraries are important so it's good if we are getting hands on practice on both the things together okay so this is all about you have to learn as a uh, as a ro- road map that okay these are the things that you have to master on and also i would say when you are learning all these things not just follow the concepts okay follow follow the concepts i would say try to make analogy with the real life and the third part is try out mathematics try out mathematics okay and now in the final thing just learn one thing at a time what take one architecture try to implement it learn it properly and then only switch to something else okay and these are the basic network that i have discussed so far because if you know these things minimum you are good to go uh, if you talk about any interview no one will ask generally more than that if you are good with cnn if they generally ask what is cnn how does it work and what are the architecture what are the other types It's the questions mostly questions revolve around these areas itself It, some people it depends on some people they might go deeper in the mathematics but usually uh, no one try to go in deeper in mathematics generally people good people ask questions about the uh, concepts like how it is actually working uh, and why it is working and maybe sometimes use case study is also given okay this is a use case and you tell me which kind of algorithm will be better or if you are per- applying a particular algorithm then why and how Okay, so these are the things that will help you to become a deep learning engineer if you are trying to be.